Ah, yes, Monday again. Here we go. No Gene today, so it's a boys club with fist bumps and explosions. Me and Shaw hanging out. We'll hook you up with the Monday morning throwback. Recap the weekend. Lots and lots of stuff happening over the last three days. Man, crazy. Between the Olympics, Packer Family Night, the concert at Copeland Park and Event Center, it's just been a wild ride for the last couple of days. Busy, busy. Uh, Three ways. The freaking sports, bad news, happy music, and our daily check-ins. Of course, if you want to get in touch with us this morning, you can do that by visiting rockmornings.com. Head to the website for all of our contact info and to get in touch with us. Got some Atreyu and Danzig in a few minutes, so stick around. More of your rock mornings coming up in just a bit. It is Simone Biles. There it is. Biles and Jade Carey. Is there any medals left? <laughs> I think there or are did, still some to be awarded. Or did yes. she win them all? Uh, not all of them, but a uh, lot. What did they call it? The Gold Rush Weekend, right? Because there were so many gold medals on the line mm-hmm. this weekend, and we won pretty much all of them and uh, increased our uh, our odds of walking away with all the medals. <laughs> it seems like we won them all this weekend. Simone Biles, of course, getting a gold again this weekend in the vault. Dude, it's... She's not done yet, by the way. I know. I know. We won six medals on Friday, three in uh, shooting, three silver, excuse me, in shooting, equestrian, and swimming. Then we won three bronze medals on Friday in sailing, archery, and track and field. No golds on Friday, but huge Saturday, 18 more medals, five of them gold, including Simone Biles winning the vault. My guy Ryan Krauser did it. He shot put it yes, in he did. Right, out of the co- right out of the country to get a gold mm-hmm. medal. Also got a gold. Vincent Hancock won his fourth gold in men's skeet. Skeet, skeet, skeet. And the swimming team set a world record in the mixed medley relay. Katie Ledecky got her 800-meter race, ninth gold of her career. It ties her for second most all-time. She's hoping to compete again in 2028. Mm -hmm. Phelps, of course, first on that list with 23 career goals. (laughs) She's going to have a hard time catching him. Uh, Sunday, yesterday, another big day with 10 more medals, five of them gold. Sprinter Noah Lyles. I don't know. I, I don't know how the hell... Did you watch that? I did, actually. Yeah, I watched that live. We watched it, and of course, it's so fast. It comes to an end. Less than 10 seconds. You think the Jamaican guy won. Yeah, I did. They're waiting around. And then all of a sudden, he he rips off his, what is it, a billet or whatever the hell they call it? Yeah, and it was his name on the pin to his jersey. And he runs around, and he's, dude, the funniest part of that, I don't know if you caught it, but was the camera guy. Mm -hmm. There's like this camera, and he's got a vest on, he's got the camera up, and he's trying to shoot him, and Lyles is not, he's not running, he's jogging. And And jumping and spinning. And and the poor camera guy can't keep up. He's like, dude, slow down, man, I'm just trying to take some pictures of you. Some middle-aged dude out there trying (laughs) to keep up with the fastest man in the world. Right, At 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 a brisk walk is about what he was doing, and this guy couldn't keep up, but... Noah Lyles is now the new fastest man on earth. The seventh fastest is the guy from Rice Lake. That's right. Uh, also yesterday, Kristen Faulkner took home gold in the women's cycling. By the way, she made the team as a sub huh. and then took home gold. Took home gold. How Not cool bad. is that? Uh, yesterday, swimmer Bobby Fink won the men's 1,500-meter freestyle race. The women's swimming team won their medley relay, setting a new world record along the way. And then Scotty Scheffler. Shot a nine under par in his final round. Boy, oh, boy, that's a hell of a swing, huh? Mm-hmm. Won by a stroke, got himself the gold, added up. Team USA entering, or excuse me, ended the weekend. Sitting pretty with 71 total medals. China is at 45, France at 44, Great Britain at 37, Australia's got 31. We also, after the weekend, are now tied with China with 19 golds. France and Australia next with 12, and then Great Britain has got 10. So... We're dominating right now, Sean. Yes, we are. What a weekend for USA, and there's so much more to go. A lot more tracking, uh, track and field. Yeah. The break dancing is coming. It's the final day of gymnastics, and Simone Biles still has a chance to win more medals. Uh, she'll compete in both the balance beam and floor exercise finals. Uh, she'll begin on the beam. She's a two-time Olympic bronze medalist there. Uh, she'll also compete in the floor final, an event where she is unbeaten in major international competitions. So the gold, or at least the medal count, uh, may continue to rise today thanks to Simone Biles and others. Yeah, I think uh, 
May is the uh, not the right word that we want to use for that show. Will there you go? As opposed to May, because man, she's just unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Un- every time she goes Best out ever. there, I'm just I'm just impressed. I'm just am. How do you do that? Superhuman. You see, they say that on the floor exercise, twelve feet, she, twelve feet in the air, bro. I know. I was seeing all the memes. One of them was like three Shapiro's, uh, Ben Shapiro's, if you stack them on top of each other. One was 365 James Patterson books (laughs) piled on top of one another. That's how high 12 feet is. A lot of interesting memes measuring the height that she can get. Of course, the big story, though, over the weekend, Shaw, was the big guy in the underpants and his dong. I'm I'm sorry. I missed that one. The pole vaulter? Come on, man. No, didn't see it. Oh, get out of here. It was everywhere. Okay, what happened? There's a French pole vaulter, and, you know, they got to wear these very tight outfits or whatever. And he goes over the pole. Now, it his penis didn't cause the fault. The fault was because his leg hit the pole and knocked it off. But as he comes down, his his junk is so massive, Shaw, and he doesn't have it taped down properly or whatever. It hits the pole as he's trying to go over it, and it and it... it it, it bounces up and down as he's in slow motion. Everybody, dude, it's like you watched it in slow motion. Everybody was. We we're at the bar. It was so fun. Everybody's having a laugh and just watching this thing over and over again. This guy, his Tinder must be blowing up if he's on Tinder or whatever. His single life is coming to an end because that guy's going to have dates forever now with his big, giant, massive dingles going on everywhere. And it, it, dude, the bouncing was so fun. I said, look how far down it bounces. It goes like a full four inches down, and then it comes right back up. Poing. Ah. Uh, that was the talk of the town over the weekend, by the way. And for those of us that are on social media, at least, I know you're probably... Yeah, I didn't catch that one, but thanks for a, the heads up. A lot of time. But if you if anybody talks to you about it today, now you're in the Now middle. I know. Yeah, the French pole vaulter. I don't even... It's Armando something or other. Okay. But uh, yeah, his, uh, his wiener made news over the weekend, Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a medal just for that. I... He might get one. Maybe at the end, he'll get some sort of a participation award, right? <laughs> that w- I'm okay with that, all right? Dude shows up and swings bats, and, you know, you got to give him a little ribbon as he goes home. Not that he doesn't have enough to carry with him. Apparently. Three-way with Shaw in the newsroom. No Jean today, by the way. She's uh, out sick, so it's just me and you. What do we got? Uh, the center of Hurricane Debbie is expected Ooh. to bring potential record-setting rains, catastrophic flooding, and life-threatening storm surge to the coast of Florida before it moves slowly across the northern part of the state and then stalls over the coastal regions of Georgia and South Carolina. Can Tori there yet? Uh, probably. Boy, my wife's going to have trouble because she's in she's engrossed in the Olympics, mm-hmm. but she's also one of those like weird... Uh, she has a weird fetish for storm destruction. So whenever something like this happens, she's tuning in. She's on the Weather Channel all the time, mm. watching the reports. And Cantori is is you know when he as soon as he shows up, that's when it's it's real. a major event. Yes. Right? Yeah. So uh, the, right now, Debbie is located about 100 miles west of Tampa. Sustained winds of 75 miles an hour. It's expected to make landfall around midday today. Jurors are scheduled to be chosen today in Lacrosse for the second murder trial of Nia Tao. He's one of two men who were arrested after a triple homicide in 2021 at a quarry near West. Salem. About 100 people have been summoned for jury duty, and the Tao trial could last up to two weeks. Tao was tried for the first time in June of last year, but the jury could not reach a verdict at that time. The suspect in a 2019 murder has been brought back to La Crosse County to await pending court appearances. Anquin St. Junius is being held in the county jail on a $25,000 cash bond. St. Junius is accused of fatally stabbing Virgil Stewart five years ago during an argument inside a taxi that was parked on 7th Street. The case has not been and tried yet, primarily because of difficulties finding a defense attorney. Yeah, for he's Saint the Junius. one who keeps like turning down yes. his like uh, court appointed attorneys, right? Yes, he's changed lawyers many, many times. Uh, until recently, Saint Junius had been housed at the state prison in Portage, where he's being held on other charges, uh, awaiting his lacrosse appearance. U.S. gymnastics star Suni Lee's Olympic medal count keeps rising. The Saint Paul native earned her third medal of the 2024 Paris Games and the sixth of her Olympic career by claiming bronze yesterday in the uneven bars. Lee has. One last chance to add to her medal total when she competes in the balance beam on the final day of gymnastics competition today. Yeah, also, Shaw, over the weekend, of course, there was a concert here in town. I heard about that. Yeah, and uh, it was a great time, man. I tell you what, it was hotter than hell. Mm -hmm. I was very miserable the first, like, two hours. Personally, I don't deal well with the heat, and it was kind of inescapable. (laughs) But the first two hours there was I was just trying to stay in the shade and stay hydrated as best I could. Tim Montana rocked it. I think people were very impressed with him. Okay. I don't I don't know what people were expecting, if they had expectations, but that guy was fantastic. Um, and, he, and he had some really cool stories about his life, uh, mm-hmm. real, you know, like talking about being from Butte, Montana, 
and uh, COVID and how things shut down and he and the band members, like, uh, you know, opened up a restaurant and started serving all the people in town and all the... Yeah, it, it, it was pretty cool, man. And he was a he was a really cool dude. I ran into him in the band backstage and uh, we were talking about Chasing Amy and uh, we were uh, having a conversation about that. Got backstage again and met... Uh, let's see, who else did I run into? Uh, the Kevin... Uh, Martin from uh, Candlebox, super cool dude. He was uh, backstage, and I, I asked him if they were going to play "Cover Me," which is my favorite Candlebox song. And he said, "Yeah, it's on the it's on the list tonight." And I said, "Okay, great." I said, "My my mom just passed away," and I said, "It's one of my favorite songs." And when I was a kid in my teens, it helped me out through a lot of you know dark times. And I said, "I'm sure you hear that about your music a lot." And he said, "Well, thank you, I appreciate that." And then he he mentioned it on stage oh, actually. Nice. Uh, didn't remember my name, whatever. I don't. That's not important. But he did mention it. That was really cool. So cool that the boss man texted me because uh, he was there and he's like, wow, that was cool, dude. And I said, I know, right? <laughs> I even got a nice compliment from Jerry Cantrell. I was backstage to do uh, the intros for, for Jerry Cantrell and he saw my Simpsons tattoo. And I didn't take the opportunity to ask for a selfie because he looked like he was get busy getting kind of mentally geared up to go on stage. But he uh, he did point it out and and, and and Puck was there with me and he's go he looks at me he's like, Wow, that was cool. And I said, I know, right? <laughs> Jerry Cantrell likes my tattoo. So, but it was, it was fantastic. Uh, I, you know, all the bands are great. You know, you got to give it up for Bush. They, man, Gavin Rossdale is almost 60 years old. And the guy is, you, you're Still all, doing it. You're almost 60, Shaw. And I look at you and I'm like, there's no way. No way. I'm keeping up that to. level of energy. Bro, and he had the, you know, he had the cut shirt where his, you know, his abs are poking mm -hmm. out. And, what, and, I, and, I, and of course, all the girls are like, hey, Brian, can you get me back there? I want to meet Gavin. I'm like, yeah, I'm sure that's mm -hmm. what he wants is a bunch, of, a bunch of sweaty women from Wisconsin coming backstage trying to talk to him trying to chat him up, get him to go on a Tinder date or something like that. <laughs> but uh, they still had it, and they had to battle with the moths and the, the, the mayflies and all the bugs, dude. It was a situation there uh, on stage. He even mentioned it several times. He's like, I think I just made out with it, like every bug in lacrosse. <laughs> so, but no, it was good. It was a great time. We had fun. And other than the heat in the afternoon, uh, the early part of the show was great. And by the way, uh, you can say rock is dead, but that was the biggest show they've ever had at Copeland right? Park and Event Center. All those years of doing nice. country shows and all the different artists they brought in, that was the most people inside Copeland Park and Event Center for a concert ever uh, on Saturday night. So that's a really cool hook to hang your hat on uh, if you're a rock and roll fan. We'll get to some Candlebox and Bush and Tim Montana and Jerry Cantrell this morning. Right now, it's a tray of rock mornings on air, <laughs> online, on the app. Danzig Mother Rock Mornings. Not, uh, Brian and Gene. Got it. I got it. I got it. Weekend, man. A lot of beers. A lot of beers. As we mentioned earlier, USA going into the weekend. Trailing in the uh, gold medal count. Now we're tied for first with China. And we, of course, have the overall medal count was 71 one of those uh gold medals was also a world record for bobby fink bobby fink who came back in both of his olympic races in the 800 and the 1500 in tokyo in unbelievable scintillating fashion has flipped the script for this one bobby fink won it away in the end in a race he never trailed back to back golds in the 1500 Woo! for fink World record as well. What a race for Fink. Pretty impressive stuff. So was the world's fastest man. Again, it looked like the guy from Jamaica won, but then after a couple of seconds, they said, no, it goes to Noah Lyles. Noah Lyles said after he was defeated yesterday in his heat, I won't be underestimating my opponents again, and I feel sorry for my competitors. There's an Olympic gold medal waiting for somebody. Who wants it the most? This is close. Jamaica's going to do it on debut. They're working on the photo. Noah Lyles is looking anxiously. It's Noah Lyles. And it had to go to a photo finish to decide it. Pretty impressive stuff there over the weekends at the Olympics for the USA. Elsewhere in other sports, the Brewers... Beat the Nationals on Friday 8-3. It looked like a promising weekend for the Brew Crew, but then they lost 6-4 to four yet, uh, Saturday and 4-3 to three yesterday. The Brewers have now lost six of their last nine games, and they're off today before they head to Atlanta tomorrow night at 6-20. That game will be on TBS. The NFL preseason continues on Thursday night with the Panthers at the Patriots. That'll be at 6 o'clock on the NFL Network. 
Vikings host the Raiders on Saturday at 3 on the NFL Network. Packers are in Cleveland Saturday at 325. The Kansas man who pled guilty to stealing the Jackie Robinson statue from a Wichita Youth Baseball League earlier this year was sentenced on Friday to 15 years in prison for multiple cases. Ricky Alderete uh, pled guilty in May to theft relating to the January disappearance of the statue and uh, also some other charges. He had faced more than 19 years, and now he's got 15 years in prison ahead of him. And big uh, moments over the weekend, of course, the Pro Football Hall of Fame induction. Julius Peppers and a bunch of other people going in, including Steve Mongo McMichael. Now, he obviously could not be at the induction because of his... Symptoms with ALS, unable to speak, unable to uh, to walk or move or go anywhere, but had all of his play, all of his, uh, oh, well, maybe not all, but a bunch of guys from the 85 Bears surrounding his bed, his wife there, unveiling the bronze bust. A, a, an extremely emotional situation, man. If you haven't seen the video, it's impressive stuff. Bring a tear to your eye. Um, Hall of Fame enshrinement, of course, taking place. Canton, Ohio. Tom Benson Stadium, uh, surrounded by his wife, daughter, and members of the Chicago Bears famed 1985 defense, Steve Mongo McMichael's Hall of Fame bust unveiled inside of his home in Homer Glen, Illinois. Mongo, bedridden from battling ALS over the last three years, lost the ability to speak on his own. His sister Kathy delivered McMichael's uh, enshrinement speech on his behalf in a pre-recorded video. The live video from his bedside streamed to the crowd in Canton. While uh, Chris Berman of ESPN served as the Hall of Fame Master of Ceremonies, relayed the message that he received from the defensive tackle about his career impact, saying, quote, I do not want ALS to be my legacy. What I did on the field, that's my legacy, pushing myself to the limit farther than anybody else could. So, again, a very emotional moment over the weekend at the Hall of Fame ceremony for Steve Mongo McMichael, who finally got in. Deservedly so. We'll get to Stained in a bit. Also, some sound garden. If you need something, you can get in touch with us. Visit rockmornings.com. Rock Mornings with Brian, Gene, and Shaw. A baguette, so to speak, in his pants there in France. I mean, come true. Gold within his reach, oh yeah. At his athletic peak, he has the meats just like Arby's, but who knew? His feet to beat the world. Jump was strong, should have won. Well, we're wrong. Pull was long, not as long as his dawn. Bar went bonk, that tree trunk knocked it off. Dream is gone. Oh, good lord. I I don't know if I laughed harder this weekend at anything than the video of that guy. Just wah, 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 wah. It's like the thing behind the door. The door stop, you know? <laughs> just when you're a kid or you're a cat or a puppy and you're just enamored with things that are funny, you keep going back to that well. And that's... That's what that video was this weekend, man. I just kept going back to it because, like... <laughs> Couldn't get enough, huh? Uh, hilarious. I'll be the first to admit it. I don't care. I watched it a thousand times. It was funny every time I saw it. <laughs> French pole vaulter Anthony Amorati, I think is his name, going viral this weekend, knocking the bar over with his crotch. People are reporting that his bulge cost him the chance at a medal, but that's not exactly true. He actually hit the bar with his legs first. Uh, the video going viral for obvious reasons, however... Uh, If you notice in the video, the bar starts moving before he even fully clears it because his legs hit it. Okay. And on the way down, that's when Mr. uh, Mr. One-Eye starts to make an appearance. One of his three attempts to clear the 5.70 meters to make it to the final, he missed all three of them, Mm -hmm. so he wouldn't even made it into the medal round anyways, but... Well, he's sure the talk of the Olympics, though. Right now he is. We've had viral moments, and he is now the new viral star of the Olympics. We had uh, Bob the cap catcher 
We had the Turkish shooter guy. Mm-hmm. We had uh, Alona Mar, of course, and her run in the rugby, and uh, just a bunch of others. Snoop uh, everywhere. Snoop in his dressage <laughs> outfit. <laughs> that was classic. That was classic. I, didn't, I didn't realize Martha was 83. Yeah, she looks Man. good, doesn't she? Oh, she looks, and she's putting thirst traps on the internet, dude. Mm-hmm. Have you seen these things? I'm not sure in what the, that means. Thirst traps. So, like, it's a you know a picture that someone puts out there, whether it's male or female or otherwise, uh, the, to try and garner attention for oh, being okay. sexy. They call them thirst traps. Got it. Uh, anyways, yeah, Martha's been putting those out for a few uh, years now, and uh, she looks fantastic. But the back, it almost looks like AI, right? You're almost like, there's no way that's it is. Wait a minute, it is Snoop. <laughs> He's dressed up in the full dressage. He's got the helmet. He's yep. on the back of that golf cart with the blazer, Martha. The whole nine yards. I love it. I love it. I saw a funny meme about Snoop too this weekend. It's it was a guy that had shared a screen cap of a text he got from his mom. I saw this. It was classic. And the mom said something about, I love the Olympics and Snoop's the best part, or I love watching mm-hmm. Snoop. And the, and the guy says in the in the screen cap, he says, this is this comes from my mom, the same woman who grounded me for buying Snoop CD, CD. when I was a teenager. Exactly. And it's like. Snoop has gone mainstream now. Oh, how the turns have tabled. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, a lot to, lot to get from the Olympics this weekend. The French pole vaulter, of course, was uh, the big story on the internet, Shaw, if you were out there. I know Adele stopped her concert. Did you see that? Mm-mm. Yeah, so Adele was in, uh, I think she was in Munich, Germany. Okay. And on one of the screens, she must have, like, talked to her people or whatever. She had, you know, they got the big screens in the back to show all the visuals and the lights and all that stuff and video packages, production pieces. They stopped in the middle of her concert so she could watch the women's 100-meter final on the big screen there. Well, she's probably not alone in wanting to see it, so. Pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Nice to see Adele being a big fan of the Olympics, but, yeah, lots going on. Did you, you, you got to, you probably haven't watched it yet, right? You're busy? You haven't, the pole vault guy? Yeah. No, I have not seen All it. All right, well, you do yourself a favor and Google it, and you got to watch it at least once. It's hilarious. <laughs> or a thousand times like you did. Yeah, every time I'm just dying laughing because there was people in the bar that didn't know. And you're like, oh, look at this thing. Look at him. <laughs> and there's different angles and close-ups and slow-mo. And there's, yeah. And then there's funny commentary, obviously. I'm people, sure. Yeah. But that was the big, the big, big, big news this weekend, Joe, was that mm-hmm. guy <laughs> from the Olympics at least. What else going on? Well, also big news this morning. Hurricane Debbie has now reached the coast of Florida, bringing with it the potential for record-setting rains, catastrophic flooding, and life-threatening storm surges as it moves across the northern part of that state before hitting Georgia and South Carolina. The storm made landfall as a Category 1 storm early this morning with maximum sustained winds of 80 miles per hour. Elsewhere today... A jury pool of 100 people will be called to La Crosse County Court today for the second murder trial of Nia Tao. He's charged with the murders of three men in the summer of 2021 at a quarry near West Salem. Tao's first trial a year ago ended with a hung jury. Two weeks have been set aside for this retrial with jury selection happening today, followed by opening arguments tomorrow. The three victims were shot to death in an alleged dispute over money. Two adults in La Crosse County have now been formally charged with child neglect in the death of an infant. LaVon Liggins and Brittany Baisley made their first court appearances in the case on Friday. The two were the parents of a one-year-old boy who died unexpectedly last year. Police have been investigating whether that baby may have been exposed to drugs in the home. Bond for both Baisley and Liggins is set at $100,000. They have hearings scheduled for later this month. A campaign promoting clean energy is making its way across the country, and La Crosse was one of the early stops by the national group organizing that tour. Energy activists met with local residents at Cameron Park on Friday, promoting electric cars, solar power, and other technology which could reduce pollution leading to climate change. Monica Cruz of the La Crosse County Board supports this nationwide effort. There's no question that we must all aggressively advocate for clean energy if we want our species to survive on this planet. We must work to promote economic impacts and the public health benefits of carbon-free energy as though our lives depended on it, because they do. Backers of the clean energy revolution argue that using solar energy can save thousands of dollars over several years compared to electricity. The Minnesota Twins will place a bronze statue of retired catcher Joe Maurer outside of Target Field. Maurer's statue will be the eighth at the ballpark. It will be unveiled at some point next season. The announcement was made during a pregame ceremony honoring Maurer's induction last month into Baseball's Hall of Fame. He was joined on the field by fellow St. Paul natives and Hall of Famers Jack Morris and Paul Molitor. Nice honor. Oh, yeah. Anytime you can get a statue of yourself. He's a heck of a player.
Uh, television tonight, the Olympic highlights continue with Keenan Thompson and Kevin Hart on Peacock. The primetime coverage tonight on NBC includes the women's beam and floor routines, which you mentioned, Simone Biles, of course, can yep. win some more gold there. Uh, the men's 200-meter race and the women's 800-meter race in track and field also featured on NBC's primetime coverage of the Olympics tonight on NBC. And the Bachelorette will be over on ABC. Late-night shows are still in repeats and preempted for the Olympic coverage. So that's what's on the boob tube, Shaw. Yeah, I'll be watching some more Olympics. That was kind of all we watched all weekend. Yeah, we, me too. I watched a lot of it. Yeah. My the wife table had it on tennis her. gold medal match was wild. Wife had it on her phone and wherever we went. I watched a little bit of Red Sox baseball. Obviously, I had the concert uh, Saturday night. But uh, you are talking table tennis, ping pong? Yeah, this was the uh, gold medal uh, match between China and, surprisingly, not China uh, in the gold medal <laughs> game. It was against the Swede. Uh, and the Chinese won. But uh, these guys are like 20 feet behind oh, yeah. the table. They're not anywhere near the table. And they're doing these sustained rallies. It's just amazing to yeah, watch. They're like robots. Kind of. Yeah, and you just, you got to wait. so good. You know, it's... You watch, remember, obviously, everybody references Forrest Gump, right? It's like one of the right. most famous ping pong scenes in a movie of all time, right? And just, he's back there, dunk, 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 and you're just robotic in the way you, and you're so, and then you change your paddle position, you're like, backhand, 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 forehand, forehand, forehand. You know, you're just hoping for the other guy to maybe, like, blink, and then get, you gain an advantage if he blinks or if he breathes <laughs> wrong or he swallows some sweat or something like that. It's like, They're oh. so good, though. Oh, it's crazy, yeah. More from Shaw coming up uh, throughout the morning, plus bad news, happy music. It's Soundgarden. Rock mornings, only on 95.7 The Rock. Soundgarden fell on Black Days, Rock Mornings with Brian, Jean, and Shaw. She is out sick today. Shaw is in the newsroom. We'll get back to him in just a bit. Find us online at rockmornings.com. Got a request from Tom earlier. Texted in, wanted to hear some Slayer. Try to get to that. Also got one from Grant who said, got to play the version that features Dorothy of Better Days so much better. Yeah, we uh, just heard from Stained a few minutes ago with their latest Better Days, and they've got a version of that with, excuse me, Dorothy. Thank you very much for getting in touch with us, Tom and Grant. Find us online again at rockmornings.com. Kind of cloudy, kind of dreary, maybe some rain today in our area. Showers, thunderstorms possible, but temperature-wise, it's going to be really nice this week. Looks like mid to upper 70s, way better than those 90-degree temps we were having over the last couple of weeks. I can actually go outside and enjoy it. How nice is that? Offspring in a couple of minutes. Stick around. Rock mornings, Monday to Friday, 6 to 9. Offspring kids aren't all right. Only on Rock Mornings with Brian and Gene. This kid is all right, thanks to first responders who showed up. We almost had another baby Jessica situation on our hand. I don't know if you're old enough to remember baby Jessica, but it captured the nation's attention for a full day and a half as she was trapped in that well on her aunt's farm in Texas. And they were working on that thing, pulled her out. It was, man, it was a scene. It was all over the television back then. Everybody was talking about it. Baby Jessica, well, this kid fell in a well as... Firefighters and first responders tried to get him out. 14-month-old toddler fell into a pipe. It was about a foot wide and 12 feet deep. Thankfully, the kid was not seriously injured. Unfortunately, because he's a toddler and he was down there freaking out and scared and terrified, wouldn't grab the rope that they tossed down to him. So they had to use a catch pole, normally used for cha- uh, catching loose dogs. But the first responders got there, worked fast, had him out in about 20 minutes. Of course, all caught on chest camera video. He, like, called out for his little brother. He acted like he was never going to see him again. I can't imagine what she thought whenever she saw him fall, because for all she knew, it was a sewer line. It was full of water, or it was 50 feet deep. I mean, she had no idea. By the grace of God, that boy was carried down that hole by an angel. Mount Ridge Police Department says that they worked with the Mount Ridge EMS and the Mount Ridge Fire Department to rescue that 14-month-old that was trapped in a PVC pipe earlier this weekend. 12 inches in diameter, 10 to 12 feet deep. Crews worked for about 15, 20 minutes to get the kid who appeared uninjured upright in the bottom of the pipe. They uh, apparently constructed a makeshift catch pole using a smaller PVC pipe and some rope and was able to get the uh, rope down there and around the kid and pull him out. 
14 month old named Bentley, not seriously injured. Statement from the police department says, quote, we extend our deepest gratitude to all the first responders for their swift and effective action, which transformed a dangerous situation into a successful one. Bentley's father said the toddler was shaken up, but soon returned to his rambunctious self. Ugh. Scary moment, though. The kid disappears down a pipe and you're like, uh oh, we got a big problem on our hands. Yeah, that baby Jessica thing again. I think that was like, what, 86, 87 when that happened? That well on her aunt's farm and they're digging down there and they had like a thousand people gathered around working on it. It was, it was a scene, man. Back to Sean in a few minutes. We'll also get to some Ashes to New and some Lincoln Park if you need something. Find us online at rockmornings.com. Rock Mornings with Brian, Gene, and Shaw. It's hot. You're thirsty. Refresh yourself with the official bottled water of the 2024 Olympic Games. Sen. Sen River Water. Sourced directly from Paris. Sen River Water will leave you asking for more. Emodium. Rich in electrolytes. And E. coli. Sen River Water is the energy boost you need. To run to the toilet. Just ask our Olympic triathletes. Once they're out of the hospital. Sen River Water. Avoid contact with skin. Seek medical attention immediately and try to remain calm as your skin sizzles and pops. So dirty that it's making athletes sick. Mm -hmm. So they're pulling out of other events. Belgium now withdrawing from the mixed relay triathlon race. Switzerland had to mix up their roster after athletes from both countries fell ill following the initial triathlon races last week. The conditions in the Seine so nasty and polluted and disgusting that athletes are getting sick and have to pull out of some of their other competitions. Yeah, but still, the Olympics made the decision to hold the event this morning, uh, and uh, they are in the water today. Now, it's it's amazing to think about it. that river has not has been off limits since 1923 because it's been too toxic. They spent a billion and a half dollars to try to clean it up. So and, for a hundred years, you couldn't go in the river yeah, with your boat but or now swimming. Suddenly, they're saying the levels are acceptable. Never, I would. Mm-hmm. I, I get it. I understand. You work so hard and all, but no, I would. I would not. I mean, you, you could die. I mean, granted, you could die from a lot of stuff, but like. You know, a hundred years of like not going in it over billions, you know, billions of dollars Mm -hmm. spent and they still can't solve this problem with this water. They say the levels are acceptable. Swim on, they say. Oh, God. No, thank you, bro. I, well, like there's another swimmer who said they saw things. So they're down there in the water and they're watching poop float by, Uh you know, they can see it visually, not just like, you know, enzymes that are microscopic, Shaw, that get into your bloodstream, you know, through your mouth or your nose. We're talking about. Somebody's dookie floating right by you. Excuse me, Mr. Dookie. I'm trying to swim here. I'm trying to win a gold medal. Hi-ho. Yeah, no. That dirty ass send water, though. It's nasty, mm-hmm. Shaw. Nasty. Look. I guess at least the, the pools are clean. Yeah. But what do you the, do if you're a triathlete and you've trained so hard for this and then you get to Paris and you find out that you may endanger your health by just jumping into the river to compete? I don't, yeah. I, and again, you're taking your life in your hands as anytime you, you leave the house, essentially, right? A bus could hit you. Something oh, could yeah, fall from but, space. But, I mean, you, again, you, you, you work so... You know there's danger in the water. Right. You work so hard and you spend so many years honing your craft and, 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 and becoming one of the best in the world. You make the Olympics. You represent your country. You want to... Do your, you know, your, your, your people proud, and, and then there's poop in the water. Mm-hmm. And again, after all of the things that they did to try to clean it up, it's like you couldn't figure it out. Nasty. What else is going on? Uh, Hurricane Debbie has now reached the coast of Florida, bringing with it the potential for record-setting rains, flooding, and life-threatening storm surges. The storm made landfall as a Category 1 storm near Steinhatchee, a tiny community in northern Florida on the Gulf Coast. It had maximum sustained winds of 80 miles an hour. Uh, The storm made landfall in one of the least populated areas of Florida, but forecasters warned that heavy rain could spawn catastrophic flooding in Florida, South Carolina, and Georgia. Already nearly 214,000 
thousand customers were without power in Florida this morning. A medical emergency may have led to a crash yesterday afternoon in Trempolo County. That crash happened just after 4.30 p.m. on Highway 53 in the town of Hale. Sheriff's officers say a 72-year-old driver suffered a medical emergency, causing the car to go off the road and into a ditch. Both the driver and a 73-year-old passenger had to be extricated from the vehicle. The driver was airlifted to a hospital while the passenger was taken by ambulance. La Crosse's Valley View Mall remains closed, and no one is saying why. The mall closed its doors last Thursday, posting a note that said the closure was due to maintenance issues. But some are wondering. Now, four days later, the mall remains closed. Some businesses at the mall, those with exterior doors like J.C. Penney and Barnes & Noble, remain open. But the rest of the mall remains shuttered, with no word when it may reopen after 10 days in theaters, Deadpool and Wolverine is already the highest grossing R-rated movie ever. According to studio estimates, the Marvel blockbusters continued to steamroll through theaters, collecting $97 million in its second mm-hmm. weekend. That raised its two-week total to $395 million, pushing it past the long-reigning top R-rated feature, The Passion of the Christ, which held that record for 20 years. A Wisconsin man was among those competing at the Olympics yesterday for the title of world's fastest man. <laughs> Kenny so Bedard. Guy, you, you hear seventh place and you're like, man, he must have. No, they were about all. About half a second uh, yeah. you know, between them. Uh, Kenny Bednar- Bednarik of Rice Lake competed in the finals of the 100-meter dash, finishing seventh, losing to fellow Al- American uh, Noah Lyles. He wasn't done or isn't done competing for the gold, however. Bednarik will compete in the preliminaries for the 200-meter dash, his best race, later today. Well, good luck to him. I hope yeah. he uh, has a better showing because, good Lord, being seventh, how dare he? Right. <laughs> About a half second behind the winner. I'm being facetious here. Right. I mean, the winner was, what, point oh 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 five. Five one thousandths of yeah. a second. I mean, I, again, this you look margin at of victory. You look at the picture of them all, and it's like, I don't know, there's body parts all mm-hmm. over the place. I don't know who, you know, I don't know how they chose it, but it was, yeah, wild, that ending. Fastest man in the world, Noah Lyles. Congratulations to him. Next time we talk to you, Shaw, Monday morning throwback. We'll get to that uh, at about 740. You also got some Lincoln Park in a few minutes. Right now, though, it's Ashes to New. Rock Mornings on 95.7 The Rock. That is Candlebox with my favorite Candlebox song, Cover Me. I won't say that it was album, album quality, but boy, oh boy. Dude still got it. Sounded almost exactly like the album. Just crazy, right? Out on the road, touring, doing this thing for 30-plus years. Still got it. Electric show on Saturday night from Candlebox at Copeland Park and Event Center. I thought they were fantastic. I thought they were great. Thoroughly enjoyed it. It's been a number of years since I saw them. Energy was high. Spirits were good. Funny story about his grandmother. (laughs) And, uh, yeah, thank you again to Kevin Martin and the guys from Candlebox taking a moment to say something nice uh, for me and my mom and and play that song, and it was great. Very emotional. Good times. If you missed the show, uh, I feel bad for you. A lot of people were there. We had a good time. There's another one, one more coming up in September, and that's Highly Suspect with Des Rocks and Dead Poets Society. You can get tickets and info online at copelandevents.com. Olympics over the weekend, Katie Ledecky in the pool. It's it's like lamb and tuna fish just goes together. Two Americans try to get on the podium here. Ledecky is pulled away from Titmus in the end. And the 800 still belongs to the one and only Katie Ledecky. First woman in history to win four Olympic golds in the same event in any sport. Won her ninth swimming gold medal in the women's 800-meter freestyle in Paris on Saturday. She's just fantastic to watch. Absolutely dominant. Also dominating, my guy, Mr. Mullet himself, Ryan Krauser. Ryan Krauser, we cannot overlook how special that man is. Eight consecutive global championships, including Paris. He has won a medal at every one of them. The most consistent American shot putter in history and the greatest shot putter in history has won his third consecutive Olympic gold. Ryan Krauser, the Olympic champion once again as he reigns in Paris.
I get it. Shot putting is not everybody's fav- favorite, right? Everybody likes the pool. Everybody likes the uh, gymnast and all that stuff. Basketball. But boy, oh boy, this dude is a beast. He's the goat of shot putting, man. The goat. Ryan Krauser. Brew Crew, unfortunately, lost two out of three in Washington to the Nationals over the weekend. They are off today. Then the road cr- uh, road trip continues in Atlanta. Tomorrow night at 6.20 against the Braves. The NFL preseason continues this Thursday night with the Panthers at the Patriots. That game is at 6 p.m. on the NFL Network. Vikings host the Raiders on Saturday at 3 o'clock on the NFL Network. Packers will be in Cleveland to take on the Browns Saturday at 3.25. Hungarian Boxing Association says it's now sending letters of protest to the IOC and to Hungary's Olympic Committee over Anna Luka Hamori's quarterfinal matchup with Am- Amin, I'm, I'm not sure, Amani uh, Khalif. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but uh, this is uh, the women's boxing at the Paris Olympics. Hamori still will accept her fight, uh, or did accept her fight against Khalif, uh, but they're sending in letters of, of protest for it. Uh, of course, this is that whole boxing thing that's going on at the Olympics, and people are still up in arms about that, including the Hungarian Boxing Association. So that story will continue, I think, throughout the rest of the the Paris Olympics. And that is sports on Rock Mornings with Brian and Gene. We'll continue with Scott Robert Shaw and the Monday Morning Throwback coming up next. Rock Mornings with Brian, Gene, and Shaw. Maybe this will refresh your memory. Since 2008, Brian, Gene, and Shaw have been your wake-up specialists. Like old times, huh? Now it's time to take a look back. Go way back. It's the Monday morning throwback. Every Monday morning, throwback. Taking you all the way to 2011, Shaw. It's been a while. Speaking of dirty water, hmm. this one dealt with water right here in our community. Yeah. In 2011, researchers from UWL discovered bullets and lead poisoning in the oh, marsh. I remember that. And so, because those bullets had been there for decades and poisoned the vegetation with their leadiness, mm-hmm. we decided to send Scrady down to the marsh to look for mutant animals. Oh. We got some hip waders from Phil Costigan. <laughs> we gave him a net. He had one of those mosquito helmets on. Yeah. Keep the mosquitoes out of his face. And so we uh, we sent the big guy down to the marsh to look for mutant animals. Well, Scrady, you're in the marsh, and you're taking pictures of bunnies and geese, and you're not catching anything, are you? Well, I haven't caught anything, but i got to tell you, out on this observation deck, yeah. you can see a lot of bubbles and things moving in the, the water. They know I'm here. Let's just say that. They for sure know I'm here. Well, I want you to go get them. There's things like, um, have you seen any roundworms, clam snails, spiders, oh, mites, ticks, Ooh. millipedes, centipedes, what? dragonflies, crickets, grasshoppers, termites, leaf hoppers, cicadas, uh, flies, leaf mosquitoes, hoppers. wasps, bees, or ants? Have you seen any of those? I haven't seen any of those, no. Maybe you should get down close. Mean... You're not close enough. Get You're down close it. to the ground. Lay on the ground and look at them at eye level. <laughs> You're supposed to be looking for stuff that's mutated. How are you going to find that just hiking the trail? Yeah, I still don't see any. I, I don't know. They just, they, they must not be out yet. The, the one mutated thing I, I accidentally did almost see, there was a one-eyed snake walking around here, and that's not cool at all. A little highlight of our time with Scrady from 2011 when he was going through the marsh down by Myrick Park here in La Crosse looking for mutated animals after they found lead bullets in the marsh from the gun club mm-hmm. skeet shooting from many, many years ago. Never did find any mutants, though. Ah, uh, well, <laughs> might have already been there. You know what I mean? I think he was looking for the mutants. Mm-hmm. <laughs> If you want to hear that in its entirety, go to our website, the Monday Morning Throwback, Scrady in the Marsh from 2011, looking for mutated animals. No such luck, huh? Apparently not. Yeah, well. I wonder if now, you know, years later, Scrady's listening and thinks back to those times <laughs> and thought, what was I doing? I I get, I don't, I don't hear from him very often. Of no, course, I, I, I also don't, 
I'm as guilty as he is and when it comes to staying in touch. Right. Um, you know, obviously, I think after everything, and I, this is just me putting words in his mouth, I, I, I'm assuming that after all of the things, the ups and downs of working in the radio industry and, and you know, being here and not being here and then being here again and not being here again mm-hmm. and then being here a third time and then you know, all these back and forth things and situations, I think uh, he, he kind of had had enough. Yeah. And being him wasn't the easiest thing either. You know, you go out there and people know who you are and, oh, yeah. you know, and they and they, they talk down to you or they don't treat you very well. It's It can be, I can, I can see it being very, you know, I've had enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, I did. He he texted me after my mom died. Uh, sent oh, me nice. a, a brief text, and yeah. So I, I hear from him occasionally. I know he's got. Oh, we hope uh, he's doing well. Oh, he's doing fine. I, I know his kids are all you know pretty much grown up and moving on and doing you know kind of like your kids and Gene's kids are all doing their own things and and starting to become adults in their own right. And I I know the last the last time I actually talked to him. Uh, I know he had talked about maybe moving somewhere else in the country uh, oh. eventually and, and, and kind of getting a fresh start. So, <laughs> But, yeah, no, he's still in the area. I, okay. I'd still hear from him. I have people that message me like, hey, I saw your buddy Scrady the other day. And, like, you still get people that text you, too, like, how come Scrady's not on the radio? It's like, well, dude, it was like 7,000 years, years ago, bro. I'm like, thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs> but those were, I, I will say, honestly, like, I, I, I look back on those times with fondness. I, I had a lot of fun memories. He's a good sport. And we had fun with Scrady. He was obviously on the program, and he, he he was in our building and on a bunch of stations. But he was a lot of fun, and he was open, uh, you know, to doing things for the most part. Um, and we always laughed when he was around. So I miss those days. Mm-hmm. Right now, it's a three-way with Shaw from our very depressing building that has no life in it whatsoever anymore. So uh, Heavy rain possible in Wisconsin as well as Iowa and Minnesota tonight. Showers and thunderstorms, some possibly severe, are in the forecast for tonight, mainly overnight. La Crosse and Eau Claire could see up to two inches of rain. The Twin Cities could see up to three inches. Up to three inches is also possible in Black River Falls. No word yet when La Crosse's Valley View Mall will reopen for business. The main part of the mall has been shut down since last Thursday, reportedly for maintenance needs. The mall says it will announce on Facebook when the building will open most of its stores again. The anchor businesses at the mall, such as J.C. Penney and Barnes & Noble, have remained open throughout It's called a Clean Energy Revolution Tour, a climate action group traveling through the Midwest to promote electric vehicles and the increased use of solar panels for energy at La Crosse's Cameron Park. Local residents joined energy campaign leaders from the La Crosse County Board. Supervisor Dylan Motter says a wetter climate is causing problems for many homeowners. Basement drywall has been torn off and sometimes hasn't been replaced yet. Septic uh, systems backed up, lots of wood rotted due to excessive moisture. And so many of our district's residents live modestly on fixed or limited incomes, adding to the stress that flood water brings. Green Bay and La Crosse were the first two stops for this clean energy campaign. The tour bus is headed eventually to Pennsylvania. It's a celebration of owls in Houston, Minnesota, as the International Owl Center celebrates Owl Awareness Day. Executive Director and founder Carla Bloom uh, talks about some of the characters or owls that highlight the Owl Center most of the time. Be the burrowing owl. She's sort of the, we don't know if she's going to come to work any given day. So it's it's a bit random if she's here or not. But our regulars are Pierce, the barred owl, JR, the eastern screech owl, and Piper, the American barn owl. Programs are free today beginning at 11 a.m. running every half hour. And a lot of businesses in Houston are also recognizing International Owl Awareness Day today as well. You got that owl story later on? The wedding one? Uh, no, I haven't seen that, I don't think. Oh. Well, I'll, I'll dig for that then. Is it worth it? Uh, yeah, I think it, it's good for bad news with that. Got it. Look for just Google owl wedding. And got it. And Giannis Antetokounmpo waited a long time to be on the Olympic stage. So when the final horn sounded in Greece's 77-71 win over Australia to keep alive his country's hopes of advancing to the knockout round, the first-time Olympian put a towel over his face and buried his head. He doesn't want the experience to end, at least not yet, even with Greece's hopes of extending its time in its Olympic basketball tournament since competing in Beijing in 08 in Jeopardy. Amanda DeCumpo says it's been an experience he's enjoyed every moment of. I bet. Yeah, I bet too. U.S. has got three more games to win. So we're on men's to the. Basketball. Yeah. Yep, for the men's basketball. We're on to Brazil, I think, tomorrow is our next opponent. They beat Puerto Rico, what, yesterday, I think? Okay. So, yeah, we're, we're moving on. We got three more games, and then we get gold medal for the men's Just basketball. Just a formality, right? Kind of. It feels like it. 
We'll see. See that Anthony Edwards dunk? Yeah, damn. He's a stud. Unbelievable. I mean, look, dunks are dunks, and everybody does them. It's it's not surprising to see a dunk, but just, man, that's, he's so high. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Crazy. With authority. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to see that. Uh, did you uh, catch any of the Mongo McMichael stuff? I did, actually, and I boy, thought that was very touching, and it boy, was a nice oh tribute. Yeah, I Steve had a hard... McMichael getting his uh, Hall of Fame bust as he is uh, welcomed into the NFL Hall I of Fame. I had a hard time getting through that video, man. It yeah. was, I was, you know. I mean, he's clinging on, no question. He is uh, battling ALS and has lost his ability to speak. Uh, in his bedridden. Surrounded um, by the members of the defense from 85. The, the fellow teammates of the yeah. 85 Bears uh, joined him as he was uh, honored uh, with the induction into the uh, NFL Hall of Fame. And, uh, yeah, you know, he... he uh, he, he he hung on long enough to get the honor. That was that was kind of in question at one point. But uh, he was there when they presented him, his wife and his teammates, and uh, and it was a nice nice moment. Yeah, I thought it was uh, a really nice thing. And of course, there was a pre taped um, speech I think from his daughter uh, that played at the Hall of Fame induction in Canton, Ohio, while they showed video of him getting the bust unveiled at his house uh with his wife and his daughter there and all those members of the 85 bear just a boy oh boy yeah it was a tearjerker big time big time and it was cool too uh julius peppers did you see what he said yeah he's giving the packers some love well he's not he played for the packers but it was what three seasons i think and so he he's not known as a packer going into the hall of fame but he said those were the three best years of his life, uh, being in Green Bay and the fans and, and playing for the Packers, which I, I was like, wow, man, that's that's really high praise. Really high praise. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, Hall of Fame inductions over the weekend. And, again, very emotional with the whole Steve Mongo McMichael thing. I didn't even know him until he was in wrestling. And then I, you know, obviously as I got older, I went back and looked at his career with the Bears. Uh, wasn't, you know, one of the standout guys necessarily uh, in that defense or on that team. Obviously, he had Sweetness in the fridge and everything, and Jim McMahon. So those well, guys. That whole defensive line. I well, mean, my goodness, Richard Dent. And, well, but those three guys obviously took a lot of the attention yes, away correct. from some of the, you know, the, the bit players, if you will. And uh, so going back and looking at his career after I found him in wrestling as a member of the uh, the the. Uh, the four horsemen with Ric Flair back in the WCW days, it was yeah impressive to see his 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 resume. So, three way with Shaw in the newsroom. We'll get back to him for another one. Plus, bad news, happy music right now. It's Incubus. Rock mornings on your rock station. Incubus with Pardon Me. Rock mornings, Brian and Gene. She's out sick today, so it's just me and Shaw and you. Thanks for joining us. Got a uh, text from Tisha. Said, uh, morning from Canada. I'm so thankful for your app. Great tunes to listen to on our fishing trip. If you could, would you play me anything Metallica? I said, sure can. Did you catch anything yet? And Tisha says, not yet. Just a buzz so far. Catching a buzz. That's what fishing trips are for, right? Pam texted in about the show at Copeland Park and Event Center on Saturday night. Bush, Candlebox, Jerry Cantrell, and... Tim Montana, she says, I got a chuckle when Gavin Rossdale thought we were being attacked by Locust. <laughs> Apparently nobody warned him about the Mayfly hatch. Ugh, brutal. Reminds me of monkey wrench shows at Riverfest. Also got a text from someone asking if Scrady's still in radio. As far as I know, he's not. If you want to get in touch with us, you can visit our website, rockmornings.com, for all of our contact info. As Shaw mentioned, kind of gloomy, some rain likely this afternoon in our area. 7 Mary 3 with Cumbersome in just a few minutes. More of your Rock Mornings coming up in just a bit. Rock Mornings with Brian and Gene, 7 Mary 3 and Cumbersome. Again, Gene is out today, not feeling well, so me and Shaw and you hanging out, doing the damn thing. Jonathan Silverman is 58. He was, of course, in the weekend at Bernie's movies. Doesn't anyone realize he's dead? No. They don't. (laughs) Turning 59 today is Eddie Fingers Ojeda, the guitarist for Twisted Sister. He wants to rock. Mark Strong, 61, 
He is uh, the bad guy from Shazam. He's also the bad guy in Green Lantern. He was the bad guy in the Sherlock Holmes movies with Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, that guy. Mark Strong, 61. Pat Smear, guitarist, played with Nirvana, Foo Fighters, slew of others. He's 65. Maureen McCormick, who played Marsha Brady, is 68. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Exactly. Lonnie Anderson, 79. Jennifer Marlowe, WKRP in Cincinnati. That Lonnie Anderson. Baby. Baby, if you never wondered. Wondered. Steve Carlisle, WKRP in Cincinnati. Lonnie Anderson, 79. Born on this day in 1932, died in 2020. She played Wilona, Wilona, easy for me to say. Uh, Wilona Woods on Good Times. Also, Grandma Ellington on the Wayans Brothers show, Ma Bell, and I'm going to get you, sucker. And she also wrote and sang Moving On Up, the theme song of the Jeffersons. Janet Dubois, born on this day in 1932. First man on the moon, Neil Armstrong, born on this day in 1930. He died in 2012. That's one small step for man. One also dying on this, uh, not on this day, but dying in 2012, but born on this day in 1964, Adam Yalk from the Beastie Boys, a.k.a. MCA. Like a lemon to a lime, a lime to a lemon. Born on this day in 1961, the star of all of the White Snake videos because she was dating David Coverdale at the time. Tony Gatan. She passed away in 2021. She was also in what? Bachelor Party, right? Tom Hanks back in the 80s. She beat somebody up too. Was she the one who beat up the Braves pitcher, right? Wasn't it Tony Katayan? Their shoe or something like that? August 5th, 1914, 110 years ago, the very first electric traffic lights installed in Cleveland. Thanks, I guess. 1957, 67 years ago, Dick Clark's American Bandstand made its debut in Philadelphia. That'll be the day by Buddy Holly. Very first record they played on the American Bandstand. When you make me cry, say you're going to leave. You know that's a lie. Uh, 41 years ago today, 1983, the movie Risky Business in theaters starring Tom Cruise. Lana was hungry. She wanted to go out for a bite. She wanted to make love on a real train. Whoa. Who was I to say no? Rebecca DeHornay in that one, right? 1992, Jeff Picaro, the drummer from Toto, dropped dead in his front yard while spraying insecticide. That was 32 years ago today. hardened from copious amounts of cocaine. 30 years ago today, 1994, one of the greatest films in the history of mankind made its way into theater starring Adam Sandler, Steve Buscemi, and Brendan Fraser. Not to mention Chris Farley, Ernie Hudson, so many others. Naked pictures of B. Arthur. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Airheads. The Lone Rangers? That's original. How can you pluralize the Lone Ranger? Preach, brother, preach. Airheads in theaters, which officially ended the discussion about who is God. Who'd win in a wrestling match, Lemmy or God? Lemmy. Ah, God. Wrong, dickhead. Trick question. Lemmy is God. There you go. Lemmy is God. Thank you, Steve Buscemi. Airheads in theaters on this day in 1994. 26 uh, years ago, 1998... Halloween H2O in theaters. It was the one where Jamie Lee Curtis was like the principal at a school or the dean at some kind of school. I think Josh Hartnett was her kid, right? Wasn't uh, Heath Ledger's ex-wife in there? Michelle, what's her nuts? Williams? Michael shows up and starts killing people. LL Cool J was like the guard at the front gate. Halloween H2O in theaters on this day in 1998. 
24 years ago today, the uh, one and only Obi-Wan Kenobi, Sir Alec Guinness, passed away at the age of 86. These aren't the droids you're looking for. Obi-Wan Kenobi died of liver cancer. 2008, the Dukes of Hazard movie in theaters starring Johnny Knoxville and Stifler. Jessica Simpson in that one, right? Daisy Duke shorts. It was over. It wasn't bad. It wasn't good, but it wasn't bad. Uh, 2010, 33 Chilean miners trapped 2,300 feet below ground when they were working in a cave and it caved in on them. They were trapped down there for 69 days. That was 14 years ago today when they got trapped. And just six years ago today, 2018, Charlotte Ray. Mrs. Garrett from Facts of Life and Different Strokes. She died at the age of 92 on this day in 2018. There's a time you got to grow and show. You know about the facts of life. The facts of life. When the world never seems. All right, just me? Yeah. There you go. Some birthdays and stuff that happened on August 5th. We will get back to Shaw in a few. We'll get some Scott Stapp as well. The friggin' sports and bad news, happy music is all coming up. Rock mornings on air, online, on the app. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Now I never will forget how to say the alphabet. Well, don't like it. Not a fan. Why? Don't, I don't like new things. Okay. I don't like things to change. <laughs> Bring back cursive. What the hell are we doing? How are you going to sign that mortgage? I don't know how to sign my name. <laughs> they never taught me. What are we doing here? Why do we got to remake the Twinkle Twinkle Little Star alphabet song? What are, right? we, what are we doing? Should be J.K. P. right? P. That's the best part of right. the alphabet song. Exactly. You run right through it. It's like a word in the middle of spelling out the alphabet. They took a strange pause there. A yeah, very strange pause. Well, this is new. Apparently, some teacher out there has been brainwashing your children for 20 years doing this thing. This new alphabet song where she just messes things up, makes it worse. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Now I never will forget how to say the alphabet. So you're not going to be proud of me anymore, huh? Yeah, it's set to Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Uh, Was there a problem with the first one? I don't think so. It's been uh, around for decades. I guess some schools are teaching this new alphabet thing. God, I'm glad I don't have... This is another thing. I just couldn't do it. I'd lose my mind. I'd be down there at the school. What the hell? Are you teaching my kids? This isn't the way I learned it. This is ridiculous. And I'm not homeschooling my kid either because I don't want that on my hands. Can't be around this kid all the time. God, I got to get rid of him. Bring him to you. You teach him, not me. But teach him the stuff I want him to learn. (laughs) The regular ass alphabet song. The way I want him to learn it. It's, I mean, it's a little weird. It's a little, but I get, I get, I guess I understand why. Well, she kind of broke it down into smaller chunks, I think. But the alphabet song already had a, a rhythm to it. It, you know, it already had a song. Mm-hmm. It, I mean, we knew the song. So I don't know why you need to change it. Can you imagine walking up to somebody and they're, or the cops, they pull you over. Like, all right, do the alphabet. And you do that. And they're like, what the hell? Arrest this man. <laughs> That's not the way it goes. Put him in jail. I mean, you got the letters right and everything, but come on. New alphabet song is out there, Shaw. What do you think? Uh, yeah, it's different. Not a fan. I was waiting for it to take that next step, and then she paused. I'm like, what are you doing? What are you, what's happening here? Yeah. Apparently not new either. I guess this has been around for a while. Okay. And some schools are actually like, it's not just like one teacher, some one-off, you know, some rando out there in Montana. You know what I mean? <laughs> like in a town of 40 people teaching the two kids there. I think it's like uh, some schools are actually implementing this in their in their programs. So, yeah. Well, it's all new to them, so they don't know how it should sound. So, oh, the know. kids know, yeah. Right. The adults, the kid comes home and starts singing this thing, and you're like, "What are they teaching you at that school?" My tax dollars are not going mm-hmm. to the right places. 
Freeway now with Sean in the newsroom. What else is happening? Uh, two adults in La Crosse County have now been formally charged with child neglect in connection with the death of an infant. LaVon Liggins and Brittany Baisley made their first court appearance in the case on Friday. The two were the parents of a one-year-old boy who died unexpectedly last year. Police have been investigating whether that baby may have been exposed to drugs in the home. Bond for both Baisley and Liggins is set at $100,000. They have hearings scheduled for later this month. We're still awaiting to hear who Kamala Harris will choose as her vice president, a choice that's expected to join her when she holds a campaign rally in Eau Claire on Wednesday. Harris is said to be considering Arizona Senator Mark Kelly, Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro, and Minnesota Governor Tim Walz. All were interviewed by Harris yesterday. She reportedly will make the announcement before Tuesday when she holds a rally in Pennsylvania, leading some to speculate that Shapiro is the choice. Harris will hold a rally with her new running mate in, on Wednesday in Eau Claire, but details of that visit, including time and place, have not yet been announced. The man who stole a bronze Jackie Robinson statue that was cut off at the ankles and found days later smoldering in a trash can in a city park in Kansas will spend about 15 years in prison, although most of that sentence is related to a burglary that happened days later. Ricky Alderetti was sentenced on Friday in three different cases in order to pay more than $40,000 in restitution for the statue. The League 42 Baseball League plans to unveil a replacement statue of Robinson today at a park in Wichita, Kansas. And Olympic triathletes plunged into the Seine River as the mixed relay event got underway today after organizers said the bacteria levels in the right. long-polluted Paris waterway were at acceptable levels. Mm -mm. They made the decision last night uh, with swimming legs in the Seine taking place today. Uh, swimming in the river has, with some exceptions, been off-limits since 1923 because it has been too toxic but it's fine it's today. It's fine. Jump in. You'll be T fine. Today it's fine. You're a world-class athlete. The last hundred years have been a little iffy, mm -hmm. but today everything is good. Just got a uh, text said, if learning the new alphabet song upsets you, ask someone with a child in elementary school how they are teaching math. That will make you want to quit society. <laughs> <laughs> Cheryl also said, I hate the new alphabet song. <laughs> Hate's a powerful word. It I don't know. Deep. I don't like it. I'll tell you that much. Not sure about hate, but. Yeah, I've heard all I need to hear about new math. I, I'm good. Did you ever? You must have struggled with that when your kids were in school, right? Um, some of the techniques they're changing and, and yeah, things are doing differently. I, I certainly had to stop and think about it for a while. Yeah. Luckily, they were all pretty good at math, better than me. So they didn't I, come to me for help that much. I would. I think I would struggle as a parent in the sense that I just look at the kid and be like, "Just do it. It's right there. <laughs> yeah. Figure it out. Show your work." What do you mean you can't add four and six? It's ten. <laughs> What's wrong? How with dumb you? are you? Yeah, I would. I would be. Yeah. Well, I learned from the best, though. My dad was very critical, and uh, so yeah. So I, I. That's where I come. That all comes from. So I'm ending it. I'm stopping it right here. That, that train ends with me. I am the caboose. Scott Stapp now with higher power. We'll get to the friggin' sports after this. Rock mornings with Brian, Gene, and Shaw. <laughs> Rock mornings with Brian and Gene. That is Scott Stapp. Higher power. Olympics continuing the rest of this week. Closing ceremony on the 11th. Tom Cruise jumping all over everything. Athletes on OnlyFans trying to make a couple extra bucks. You got the French ding dong guy. He's probably going to be busy. <laughs> After his little mishap. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, I'm sorry. But there are more traditional ways to go if you want to make some money as an Olympian. We know Flavor Flav stepped up and helped out the uh, water polo teams, right, with some sponsorship dollars. Also helped the discus thrower pay her rent for a little while. And now Kendall Ellis, American 400-meter champion Kendall Ellis, has turned a negative into a positive. If you're a fan of track, you might remember Kendall Ellis, the runner who found herself stuck in a porta potty at the U.S. track trials, banging on the door for 10 minutes trying to grab someone's attention, worried that her Olympic hopes were, of course, fading away. Right? Where's Kendall? I don't know. We got to do the race. We can't wait for Kendall. Then you find out later Kendall's in the porta potty. She's stuck. She couldn't make it. Can we rerun? No, we can't rerun the race. Help finally arrived, and then Kendall 
won the semifinal, won the final, along with the Olympic trip that goes with it, and not long after, got herself a new deal with Charmin. So no more bears pooping in a house, checking each other's butts. It's Kendall Ellis. (laughs) She said, quote, it was just the perfect fit. 28. Works in the world where only the top few make lots and lots of money to Simone Biles, right? Those people. According to a 2023 survey by the U.S. Olympic and Paralympic Committee, 82% of 475 athletes who uh, responded make less than $100,000 annually. Now, that's, you know, we're in that vicinity, right? That's where we live. (laughs) But before the Porta Potty, Ellis and her best hope to make the U.S. team came on the strength of her long history as a steady relay performer. She helped the women's 4x400 team to gold and mixed relay team uh, to bronze in Tokyo three years ago. But now she's got a little bit of a little bit of help, a little cushion, if you will, some Charmin. Talking about being stuck in the porta potty, she said, quote, it was terrifying. I don't like small spaces. Being stuck in one is actually one of my greatest fears. <laughs> Elevators, porta potties, water slides. She said she was in there for a good ten minutes, didn't have her cell phone. See, that's your first mistake. That's why you bring the phone with you wherever you go. Just in case you never know. Even at home. I got to have something to do when I'm in there. I got to crush some candy. And what if something happens? What if I get Danny Glover from Lethal Weapon 2? They stick a bomb underneath my toilet seat. I got to call Riggs. Riggs! She said, I didn't start panicking until I got to minute five. I was like, okay, I'm going to have to call for help. <laughs> Screaming inside of a porta potty. Somebody was able to hear her and come along and unlock the door. What the hell kind of porta potty locks from the outside? And seriously. And now uh, Kendall Ellis turning that into a positive. We saw the uh, cheese, the gymnast with the cheese, right? Kendall Ellis teaming up with Charmin. Making a few bucks on that. Good for her. I don't think she'll fully replace those bears. They love those bears. Those bears love to poop. Check each other's butts out. Look at my butt, kids. There's no poop on it. Kind of weird. Speaking of commercials, they also pulled the Olympics, uh, the NBC. They pulled that, uh, or Google actually pulled that uh, AI ad. You haven't seen it anymore, have you? Because they pulled it. Yeah. The one that everybody was complaining about with the, the daughter that wants to be like the marathon runner. The dad was like, hey, Google, rather than my daughter do this, why don't you write a letter for her? Yeah, they pulled that ad. We talked about that last week. Uh, music from Falling in Reverse and Jelly Roll. That guy's everywhere, man. He's like getting seats for cancer victims and he's showing up at SummerSlam and hitting people with chairs. We'll hear from him in just a few minutes and we'll get to bad news, happy music as well. Rock Mornings, only on 95.7 The Rock. You're about to enter a beautiful, exciting, wonderful new world. A cockroach living in your nostril. Now that's just nasty. Add in some having pooped for 30 days. Poop is raining from the ceilings. Poop. And sprinkle in some hashtag Florida man for flavor. Florida man. Florida man. Florida man. Florida man. Florida man. Florida man. Florida man puts his Burger King job, steals all of their chicken nuggets. It's bad news. Bad news. With happy music. Let's rock. A Monday edition on uh, National Couscous Day. I like Israeli couscous. It's yeah. more like pasta. Okay. I don't dislike couscous, but I don't quite understand. It's hard to keep it on the fork. I don't quite understand. Yeah, you got you to gotta use a spoon, obviously. Okay. I don't quite understand it. It's The Israeli couscous, though, is delicious. Uh, it's also National Oyster Day. You get down on oysters? No, I don't. That's the one seafood that I've not really. I'll eat them, but I don't. I don't. I don't choose them. You know what I mean? Like, I don't care for mussels oh, or clams. Oh, they're just they're, they're slimy. Oyster is the same. Yeah, oysters you tend to eat raw, and that's I think the part of it that I'm not a big fan of. Mm. Now, if you take the oyster and you wrap it in prosciutto and you cook it in the salamander and then you put some hollandaise sauce on it, different ball game. I'm in. I'm in like Flynn, mm-hmm. but uh, raw, I'm I'm good. Also, National Underwear Day for those of you that celebrate underwear. Hmm. A couple of very important days, Shaw. Yes, indeed. Couscous, underwear, and mm-hmm. oysters. What do we got? Uh, Alexa will be so jealous when she hears about this. 
a promotional video for a new product called Friend blew up on social media over the weekend. It's a virtual companion that you wear like a necklace. So it's Tamagotchi. Yes, exactly. The pendant has a built-in microphone that listens and responds to whatever you say. People are mostly mocking it for being weird, but others like the idea. One person said it's like a Tamagotchi, uh, the virtual pet from the 90s. But Mm. they said this one has a soul. It's always listening and tosses out comments when it wants to, but it can't totally replace real friends yet because it doesn't talk. It only responds via text. Yeah, I don't want that. You can pre-order them for 99 bucks at friends.com. It looks uh, like a life alert. Kind of. The current version only works with iPhones, but they say they will expand it to Android if there's enough demand. People, of course, are making fun of it, but a recent study found virtual friends could be helpful for people who live alone or just don't have a lot of friends to turn to for advice. Wasn't Joaquin Phoenix in a movie like that? Yes. I'm, her? Wasn't it her? I think called? that was the name of it, yes. And he, he fell, like, in talked to his, fell in love with his phone? Yes. Talking to his and like I didn't see it, but I remember the premise, yeah. Look, I, my phone is already listening to me 24-7. The government's in there. They're checking me out. They're making sure I'm not saying bad words. I don't need this as well. Right. <laughs> I already got that. It's called a phone. Right. Uh, a fugitive who was wanted for three decades out of Wisconsin was arrested recently in Iowa. George Harderload was stopped by police for not having a rear reflector on his bicycle. The man first gave police a fake name before Mm -hmm. eventually revealing his real identity. The officer can be seen growing growing increasingly confused as he runs the fake name and social security number several times. Uh, This guy, Harderlode, told police he was homeless. He'd been living in Iowa since 1991, but he would not reveal his identity. The officer initially let him go, but then came across the guy again a half hour later and told him to remove his hat and glasses so he could take a picture for facial recognition purposes. Boy, this cop was really dedicated to finding out who this guy was. It turns out Harderlode had warrants out of Wisconsin. He is a convicted rapist who escaped from a halfway house in 1995 and has been on the run since, only to get tripped up by a missing reflector on his bicycle. Well, good that that guy got, uh, the cop did his job, I guess. Right, he was very, very thorough. Thorough, exactly. Do we know uh, they charge him with any additional crimes now that he's been out for 30 years? Uh, I'm not sure what the next step is, but he was taken into custody by the Wisconsin Department of Corrections. So he's back in Wisconsin now, presumably, uh, to face the charges. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, In Houston, Texas, a Frontier Airlines crew member was arrested at the airport, causing the cancellation of a flight that was heading to Dallas. So somebody that works on the plane? Yeah, as in the pilot. Oh. Uh, Officers boarded the plane and identified the pilot as Seymour Walker, who was arrested on an assault uh, family violence warrant. He was taken into custody just before passengers began boarding. Passengers, so the plane did not take off because it had no pilot. Passengers affected by the cancellation were given a number of options, including a full refund, flight credit, or reaccommodation on the next available Frontier flight later that evening. There is a new thievery etiquette in Los Angeles. Polite burglars who steal and then show regret. There are 10 businesses that were burglarized and vandalized in the city of San Fernando over the last few nights, and cops think there could be just one perp in this case. The thief is targeting businesses and in at least one case left an apology note and a promise to never return. The thief wrote, sorry, need money for drugs, won't come back. Politeness aside, the thief was not so nice. One business owner said the burglar left broken glass everywhere and trashed the cash register. That same night, he hit another business, and that's when security cameras caught him writing the apology note. But the suspect himself is still on the loose. Hmm. Angry that a stormwater pipe runs through her yard, a woman in Florida plugged the conduit with concrete. And now residents of her community say their flooded roads are nearly impassable after every heavy rain. They can't get, like, one guy down there with a jackhammer? Right. Even more frustrating for homeowners, there is little they can do to resolve the nightmare because the streets and stormwater infrastructure in this community are owned by the community and are not public property. Mm. Uh, This community of over 100 homes and condos had no history of flooding until recently. But now, anytime they get a moderate rain, there's heavy standing water sitting for days on driveways and sidewalks. They've even put up signs telling drivers slow, no wake zone along their flooded roads. 
uh, the Homeowners Association filed a lawsuit asking the, the court to either immediately remove the concrete from the drainage pipe or replace it with a new pipe, but the judge has not yet scheduled a hearing. Um, right it's taking now, so long. It's pretty obvious this is a problem for the entire community, not just this one lady. Exactly. Uh, the stormwater literally has nowhere to go now. It would normally go through the pipe and into a repen- retention pond and eventually into a lake. But uh, what's but, her beef with it? She's just mad it's under her property? Exactly. She says it was causing her flooding. Now, there is a court hearing finally scheduled in the case, uh, not until September 12th. Oh, They snap. said they need more time to research and well, conduct the a hurricane's title search. coming through there. They I hope get... they don't get many rains between now and then. A customer at a Taco Bell shocked the internet after he said that he nearly swallowed someone's nose ring when he bit into something sharp while eating. Jeremy from Virginia placed an order for two Mm. steak cheesy street chalupas from the fast food chain. He had only a few bites remaining when he realized something sharp struck the back of his throat as he tried to swallow his Uh. food. He was able to get it out of his throat and spit the object out only to realize he'd been chewing on someone's nose ring. He said he felt sick for days afterward and is Uh. still recovering from a sore throat as a result. Uh, He posted it online uh, and in trying to get some support uh, he first went to the Taco Bell location where he bought it, but he claims the manager was mostly unbothered and refused to accept pos- responsibility. They told him the piercing was not possible to have come from their kitchen. Uh, but he said, now, even if Taco Bell reaches out, they'll likely just offer gift cards. But why on earth would I want to eat there again? In a statement, the corporate Taco Bell said, we take this very seriously. We're looking into this matter and strive to make things right. Yada, yada, yada. The right. same thing they always say. Exactly. And again, like he said, why would I want to go back there? They got nose rings in their in their chalupas. And if the response you get from the manager is, "Oh, it couldn't have been us," I don't. I, I, that I I'm not surprised by. You know, when you're the guy at the store, you're like, "Whatever, dude. You're just trying to get some free tacos or what?" You know, you just see you see it all the time. But the business, like the the actual like corporate, mm-hmm. they got to handle it with way more kid gloves right. than that. And are you ready for this one? Uh, oh, this, is this the eel? Yeah. All right. This is no way to do your own colonoscopy. Doctors in Vietnam. Is that what he was doing? No. Oh. Removed a like. live two-foot-long eel from the man's abdomen that had chewed through his intestines after he shoved it up his anus. What's up, man? The NASA fine oil on your anus, man? So this guy wanted to sexually pleasure himself yes. with a live eel, stuck yes. it up his rectum, and then yes. it ate through his body. Correct. The oh nauseating discovery was oh made when the 31-year-old man was admitted to oh the hospital God. with excruciating uh, abdominal pain. Yeah, I wonder why. Doctors learned the adventurous patient had slipped the fish up his backside nope. earlier in the day, nope. and it tried to escape. Nope. The eel bit through the patient's rectum and colon and escaped into the abdominal uh, cavity. Don't like I do not like that, Shaw. No, of course not. No. Doctors tried to remove it through the man's anus, oh. but they discovered a large lime that he had also inserted was blocking the way. So he sent it in after the lime? I, I don't know which went first. Uh, doctors opted for an emergency surgery. They opened up the patient's torso, torso and found the live eel stretching more than 25 inches oh. long oh. and roughly four inches in diameter. Oh. The creature and the lime were both removed after checking for any more foreign objects that may have been hiding inside the man. They finally stitched him up. Uh, doctors at the hospital say they've dealt with patients, uh, typically young men, who put something up their backside for sexual pleasure. There's no doubt that that guy, I mean, like... You can say it was a one in a million. I'm oh, sure you can say you silly you Jerry, we know but better. no doubt that guy stuck that up his rectum on his own. You put the box. Let's see what's in the box. Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Should have taken the wheel of fish, Shaw. Yes, exactly. The wheel of fish. What are we doing? I don't know. Every time I think I'm down, I tell you, like. Woke up this morning, questioning life, you know, big question. <laughs> Seriously, like, I woke up this morning, and I didn't feel good about life. Okay. And, you know, I'm going through a lot lately, and I'm trying to make the most of it, yeah. right? Make them away through the town, mm-hmm. all that stuff. I'm trying to, you know, find the ditty. The, the I'm trying to listen to Mr. Blue Sky by ELO, trying to pep myself up, you know, like, feel better about my life, where I'm at. I'm fat. I don't want to work out and lose weight, right? Yeah, I'm lazy. You don't have an eel inside yeah, But I don't stick eels up my ass. Mm-hmm. To go after limes that I stuck up my ass. <laughs> and those eels are also not eating through my my, my lower intestines. Exactly. Ay, ay, ay. I got that going for me, which is nice. <laughs> There's always somebody worse off, Brian. 
Yeah. That guy. <laughs> I don't think you could ever pay me enough money. Money, look, money drives the world, right? Let's be honest. I don't know. If you put a billion dollars down in front of me, maybe. But do I have to have the same outcome? Right. Is it going to eat through my how long insides? was it in? How long was it in there before they took it well, out? Well, it happened the same day. He went to the doctor the same okay. day it happened. Apparently. So it went bad fast. Yes. Right. That thing got in there and said, nope, I'm not. <laughs> maybe get, I want a, out. get a dead one. I don't know. <laughs> Is there no... Oh, God, what am I doing now? I'm pondering the, uh, the whole, the <laughs> the whole right situation. Uh, right, just trying to think of a better way for this guy to stick heels up his ass. <laughs> oh, maybe I shouldn't even get that far into it. Yeah. Well, thanks, I yeah. think. Did you look up the owl thing? I haven't gotten to the owl okay. thing yet. I apologize. That's all right. There's a couple, and just to kind of cleanse the palate here. Yes. And I only bring it up because I mentioned it earlier. There's a couple, I, I don't know where they were, but they wanted to have an owl be the ring bearer at their wedding. So it's going to fly in and... I think, yeah. So it had the rings, I think, maybe around its feet or whatever. And maybe it was a trained owl or something. Or they had an owl person there to, like... I didn't read the whole story, but the owl said, F this, and flew off for With seven for seven hours. They're trying to get this owl to come down and trying to get him, like, you know, get mm-hmm. him back into the program. And so they're wedding. <laughs> Can you imagine being someone that went to that wedding? You're like, I got to sit around here for and seven wait. extra hours because these idiots don't want to have an owl instead of a cute dog that's on the ground or a kid. You know, the cute ring bearer kid. Yeah, we came back about uh, seven hours after it initially flew off. I'm leaving and coming back. Call me when the owl shows right. up. I'm going to the bar. When it's time to kiss the bride. I'll be back. Yeah. Can we do this without the rings? Bad news, happy music. Thank you, Shaw. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Rock mornings, Monday to Friday, 6 to 9. Call. Hello. Email. I tried emailing you. Text. So many ways to check in with us. Check, check. We rely on you guys for traffic updates, requests, and all sorts of other stuff. Check this out. Visit rockmornings.com for our contact info. You can listen to the program live on the website. You can check out our daily podcast. You can, again, find our email, all that stuff right there, rockmornings.com. Got a text earlier from Tom, wanted to hear some Slayer, Raining Blood. I did not get to that. Sorry, Tom. Also, we played Stained, Better Days. Grant wanted to hear the version that features Dorothy. Said it's so much better. Pam texted in and said, I got a chuckle when Gavin Rossdale thought he was being attacked by Locust. <laughs> it was quite buggy on that stage on Saturday night at Copeland Park and Event Center. I could I could tell the bass player was not having it, man. He, yeah, he would kind of walk back by the drum set and like, you know, brush at his ears pretty much the entire show. <laughs> it felt really bad. Uh, Tisha texted in earlier, said, uh, good morning from Canada. I'm so thankful for your app. Great tunes to listen to on our fishing trip. Wants to hear some Metallica. I said, uh, I can do that. Did you catch anything? She said, just a buzz so far. T. Stett texted in, said, uh, if learning the uh, that alphabet song upsets you, ask anyone with a child in elementary school how they're teaching math. That'll make you want to quit society. Ryan also, talking about the alphabet song, said, I was in elementary school in the early 90s, and they experimented on us with spelling. We were taught, spell it how it sounds. So I've been screwed ever since that. (laughs) Spell it how it sounds. Uh, I guess uh, I can see in the sense that you put that on paper and someone's going to read it and maybe understand what word you're trying to spell. But hmm. Cheryl texted in, said that she hates the new alphabet song. Someone said, Shaw, stop talking, please. I'm guessing this was about the eel. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, that was definitely not something I wanted to hear on a Monday morning or any morning for that matter. That's, again, a reminder that as bad as your life may be right now and as rough as you think things are, You're not sticking a live eel up your rear end and having it eat through your insides. So take that with you, you know. Try to find the positive. (laughs) Even if you're like me and you're a bit of a a pessimist, try to find the positive and just say, you know what? My life could be a lot worse. I could be that guy. 
Thank you very much for the correspondence. It's always good to hear from you guys. Have a great rest of your Monday. We'll talk to you tomorrow.